For many people, just hearing the words climate change causes an immediate trigger response. With random jabbering phrases spewing out of their face such as, It's natural. It's a liberal conspiracy. And, My fridge cold. How global warming do a thing now? But what both sides tend to agree on is that the planet is currently getting warmer. And it will continue to do that during our lifetime. So whether you believe this is caused by man, the sun, or a secret fiery Jesus who lives beneath the ocean, the important question is, what will happen if it doesn't stop? Let's find out in our list of the seven effects of climate change in your lifetime. In at number seven, first, it gets cold. When people think of climate change, they imagine the whole world getting hotter evenly all over. But this simply isn't the case. And while some areas will experience a huge increase in temperatures, others are going to see the exact opposite take place. Many across the U.S. have experienced extremely harsh winters over the past five years, and it is believed that this has been caused by the effects of melting sea ice on the Earth's jet streams. Jet streams are fast-flowing air currents found in the upper atmosphere. And for the U.S., the jet stream acts as a barrier between the freezing northern air and warmer air from the south. Changes to these streams were to blame for the unusually harsh winter North America suffered last year and may suffer again this year. Hope you've got your mittens ready, folks, especially if you live in Europe, because there, melting sea ice may bring about something even more dramatic, a mini ice age. Changes in the Gulf Stream, coupled with forthcoming reductions in solar activity, are predicted to create an 11-year temperature drop sometime between 2030 and 2040, lowering temperatures in Europe to levels not seen since the 17th century, when Britain's river Thames froze solid. You know things are getting kind of messed up when we start to break rivers. At 6, I'll level with you. Sea levels have continued to rise for some time now, thanks to the continued melting of Earth's giant icy fedora, Antarctica. But surely, this is something we can leave for our grandkids to deal with, right? Not really. Because scientists believe the collapse of the Western Antarctic ice sheet is pretty much unstoppable. And by the end of the current century, sea levels will have risen by 0.4 to 1.2 meters. Now, obviously, this is a gradual rise and isn't going to just suddenly kick in when the calendar hits 2100. So throughout our lifetimes, we're going to see the devastating effects of higher seas all over the world. This means many of Earth's coastal regions will become uninhabitable. Islands such as Kiribati and the Maldives could disappear, and between 147 to 216 million people will see their homes submerged or put at risk with populations in China. Vietnam, Japan, and India the worst hit. Western nations will become exposed too, as the US and UK are predicted to see millions of coastal inhabitants forced to move. So not only are we going to have to resettle a whole bunch of folks, we're also going to need to redraw basically every map we've got. In at 5. Mass Migration with hundreds of millions of people fleeing their homes to escape the encroaching ocean, future mass migration is inevitable. But this won't only take the form of populations moving inwards, as we'll also see mass migration involving non-coastal countries too. This is because, as we said earlier, the predicted increase in global temperatures isn't something that hits the whole world evenly. It will affect some areas more than others, and these areas are often poor and vulnerable already. Imagine you've put sunscreen all over your body, but missed a huge spot on the small of your back. And that spot was already home to a nasty rash, an open wound or two, and several odd-looking moles. You probably don't want to exacerbate the problem by exposing that area to more trouble. But that's exactly what we're doing right now. The Philippines, Nigeria, Vietnam, Haiti, Bangladesh, and Malawi are just some of the at-risk nations who will see an increase in hot days and tropical storms. And as their ability to create food drops and their economies start to flounder, 
the world will see hundreds of millions of people flee their home countries to settle elsewhere. Today, we're debating whether to take in those who are fleeing from the horrors of war. But over the next few decades, you'll be introduced to a new phenomena, the climate refugee. 4. More charity adverts on TV Yeah, this is literally the worst one on the list. Does it sadden you to see sobbing children covered in flies, staring forlornly at an empty sack of grain? Well, get ready to have that image burnt into your retinas by television. Because populations which don't migrate will be forced to endure a food crisis like never before. By 2050, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says rising temperatures will be responsible for a mass global decrease in food production, causing the number of undernourished children under the age of 5 to increase from 20 to 25 million. Once more, those who had the least to do with the cause of global warming are those who will suffer its worst effects. Oh, but don't worry! You'll suffer too, in a way. At number 3, it's gonna cost you. The World Bank estimates that the Earth's poorest countries will need around $100 billion a year to help offset the impacts of climate change. But what if your country elects a delightful far-right leader who says, screw them, we'll look after our own, and refuses to pay out? Yeah, right on, you might say. Well, that's fine, I guess. Johnny no conscience. But don't get too smug, because it's still going to cost you all the same. According to a recent study by Next Gen Climate and Demos, climate change will cost the millennial generation a staggering $8.8 .8 trillion over their lifetimes, thanks to the environmental and health impacts of a much warmer Earth. Hooray! That means we can stay at home and get a sweet tan instead of going on that vacation we can no longer afford. Our parents' generation, so considerate. The paper called the price tag of being young, climate change, and millennials' economic future was based on historical data taken from 166 countries over the past 50 years. The study took into account the correlation between rising temperatures and the impact of this on a country's gross domestic product, accounting for an increased number of natural disasters, rising sea levels, and the desertification of certain parts of the world. All of these factors greatly affect wheat and corn yields at home and abroad. And by 2050, we could be dealing with an 83% increase in food prices. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I'm eating as much food as I can now, so I don't have to buy any later. In it too, more smack, less booze. Corn, barley, and wheat are all used to create beer. So when these crops become more difficult to grow, they become much more expensive. That means bye-bye, cheap whiskey, and off Weider's Zane, cheap beer. We'll also say au revoir to most varieties of French wine by 2050, and some varieties of Australian and Californian wine too as it will be nearly impossible to grow grapes in those regions if temperature rises continue as predicted. See, I'm all for having a reasonable discussion with those who disagree with climate change. But when it starts to affect how easily I can get smashed by 10 a.m., then we have a problem, pal! But as the Earth taketh away, it also giveth. As an increase in carbon dioxide levels means that poppies will become far more potent than ever before. No, that doesn't mean poppy seed bagels will ever be more delicious, it means that heroin derived from poppy seeds will become four times as narcotic by the year 2090. Ah yeah, well, you win some, you lose some. And at number one, more sickness. An increase in temperature brings many unwanted side effects for the everyday person. You'll enjoy sweatier thighs, hotter car dashboards, and a 200% increase in the meltiness of ice cream cones. But in addition to these horrific symptoms, global populations will also enjoy increased levels of allergies, Lyme disease, kidney stones, and diarrhea. Many pollen-growing weeds enjoy the conditions created by climate change, and so-called mega-weeds, which have already been seen growing in some nations, will become ubiquitous across the globe with pollen levels more than doubling by 2040. But at least if you sneeze, you might accidentally pee out a kidney stone at the same time, because with increased heat, 
comes dehydration, one of the major causes of kidney stones. And research by the American Urological Association suggests climate change is going to make taking a hot whiz a lot more painful for millions more people every year. With regards to Lyme disease, the tick responsible for spreading this debilitating condition gets super horny in hot conditions, and reproduction levels have already increased by two to five times in Canada and the U.S. thanks to the recent increase in temperatures there. E. coli bacteria is another organism which loves the hot weather, and a study from the Journal of Infectious Diseases found that, in some countries, E. coli caused diarrhea increased by 8% for every 1 degree Celsius rise. So if you thought the future of a much hotter Earth was going to be all sunshine and rainbows, you're wrong. It's mostly going to involve you starving, because you can't afford to eat. Freezing in winters, burning in summers, and watching charity ads as you sneeze and poop yourself to death while a tornado heads for your home. Sounds fun, right? And that's our list. Has that depressed you beyond belief? Yeah, well, why not take a look at our recent video on seven experiments which were actually useful to cheer you up? Maybe one of them will solve everything on this list. Probably not. But it's worth a shot?